Okay. I think we're live. What's going on, folks? Welcome to another Friday night. Drop a comment. Let me know you're here as you get in this evening. We're sure glad to have you guys joining us tonight. Make sure everything's good. There's some comments coming in right there. We're going to talk about the best baits to fish this weekend. Fishing's getting good. I mean, it's getting good. Like, good, good. Like, hmm, boy. Giants being caught every day. I'm talking about 10 pounders, 12 pounders, 11 pounders just raining down all around us. And I ain't got one yet. <laughs> it's kind of starting to hurt my feelings a little bit. I've been forced the last couple of years, caught a lot of big double digit fish, and, uh, so far, it's not happening this year. We've gotten close. We're consistently catching good bags of fish. We're catching a lot of good fish day in, day out consistently. Um, not getting just a whole lot of bites. Like, we're not just whacking them every day numbers-wise by any means. But we are catching quality bags every day. we got a lot of folks joining us tonight. A lot of people saying hi. I want to say hi to as many as I can. Tom G., Barbara Chapman, Clayton Beagle, Jerry Dean, Alex B., Brandon Pack. Yote Slayer, Colton Loach, Jack Attack. Hi, it's all of you. Thank you guys for joining us and hanging out with me tonight. Can't say thank you enough. I will say this. One of my uh, sponsors these days is Amphibia Sunglasses. You know me. I'm old redneck. I rock the camo, right? But the big deal is the Baja lens. See if y'all can see me through the Baja lens a little bit. It's a little bit of an amber lens tint with kind of a smoke mirror. It is the best day in day out sight fishing glasses I've ever owned and most of the good quality fish that we're catching right now is like the vast majority of them are coming while I'm looking at them through them bad boys so amphibia eyewear man they are coming in clutch right now for sure so I guess you guys want to know what my favorite baits are for this week might as well just delve right into it as they say Somebody said that we just skip over the poacher bite. No. I'm throwing the baby poacher because I'm throwing it real shallow. I'm throwing the baby poacher a lot because I can fish it faster. Um, and I'm wanting to cover water with it. But throwing the baby poacher and the regular poacher as well. And yes, some of those big 10 and 12 pound bass are getting caught on baits like that. Um, it's the poacher bites right now. Somebody asked if we skip over the poacher bite. No, it's happening right now. So we'll just start this out. One of my my first top five bait for the night is the baby poacher. I'm throwing this in like really shallow spawning areas, throwing it on as light a weight as I can get away with. You have to throw it on a five watt hook. Sometimes I'll take a five watt, just regular five watt EWG hook and just wrap a bunch of lead tape around it and just run it as slow as I possibly can because this thing has a real nice, tight, fast kick to it. Um, real tight wiggle subtle wiggle and it's doing really well uh, for us around some of those bedding areas um, also throwing it every once in a while on a 5 out flashy swimmer when the wind gets to blowing a lot uh, I like to throw it like that but the big poacher rig it weed let's put some lead tape on the hook balance it out and uh, crawl it around in the same type of shallow areas you can get some bites doing that all right, bait number two, the old standby, but we've gotten off white, and not because the water color is not still dirty. If you've been out to Lake Fork at all, now, if you're fishing a knot, a lake that doesn't have a lot of pressure, just throw the white one. But out here on Fork, we're getting a lot of boats out there, and I love to see it, by the way. I'm so happy to see how many people are out here, a lot of people catching a lot of big fish, and it does my heart good to see all you guys out there catching them the way that you are every single day right now, so that's awesome. But what I've done is I've gone to some type of a little, I don't even know what this color's called, but it's like a little grayish on top and white on bottom with a little bit of spark, a little more translucent, a little more uh, natural shad color type of skirt. And I'm throwing a smash tail junior in the smoke shad color on that as well. Kind of pairs up really well with it as you see there. So that is because how much pressure is on the lake. These fish are seeing a lot of baits right now. So I'll kind of want to throw something that's a little bit more difficult for the fish to get a good look at. And so that's why I changed that color. But three ounce chatterbait still catches some big ones. In fact, one of the guys just caught a 10 something on the fish using the Fish Life app on a chatterbait, I think this past week. So, like within the last few days, actually. So, that is always a good idea to throw a chatterbait in those grassy spawning areas that we got marked on the old Fish Life app. Now, number. 
three for this week. Buzzbait. Love me a buzzbait bite. Black is the buzzbait I'm throwing right now. Um, I think you can throw white if you wanted to. Right now, it's just a normal buzzbait. But here's the cool thing about this buzzbait I'm using. You bend this wire down a little bit. And that blade... You hear that? Blade bangs off the head. You can tell how much I've been using it. It's actually cutting a groove into the head there. Um, this is called the Headbanger Buzzbait. They sell them at Lake Fork Marina. It's a really... It's my favorite buzz bait. It makes so much of a loud and distinct kind of different noise that fish don't ever really hear from a buzz bait banging off the head like that. It's different sound than your regular clacker and it's a little bit louder. Um, and those spawning bass, it irritates the fire out of them and they come unglued on that sucker right there. So not a lot of baits on that buzz bait, but when you get a little bit of a warm afternoon, even if the sun's out, if it's cloudy, it may be a little better, but even if the sun's out, those fish just don't like that big old loud buzz bait coming around them when they're up there on them beds. Next two baits I didn't even bring in, they're really simple. Um, wacky rigging, a five inch Cinco, just regular old Cinco stick bait. I'm using actually like a green pumpkin with blue flake color that I had custom poured by Smash Tech when they were still making stick baits. Um, those aren't for sale anymore, but if you can find any type of an Okeechobee color, something with green and blue, that's good. I don't think the color really matters. Black and blue is good. Watermelon red is good. Like we've caught them on all those colors. Today, the best color was the old, it was called goat melon is the color that Smash Tech was making those stick baits in for a while. Um, and that's a, he passed away. I know Mr. Stan smiling down. That's a, that color is a Mr. Stan Smith invention. The awesome, awesome man that worked at Smash Tech that passed away this last year or so does my heart good to catch him on old goat melon every once in a while because that was his one of his creations he was a bit of a tinkerer you might say when it came to fishing baits and the number five bait of course is your sight fishing rig which is really simple i'm using a 3 8 ounce texas rig just a straight shank four out flipping hook 3 8 ounce tungsten weight um, and any kind of compact creature bait you want i'm using a homemade one that's not even for sale anywhere it's basically an oversized version of a rage menace it's my favorite bed fishing bait, but you could use a Hyper Freak from Lake Fork Tackle. You could use just a crawl bait, a Rage Crawl, Smash Crawl, Smash Tech, Smash Crawl would be a great one. A D-Bomb, a Beaver, any of these baits, any little compact creature bait will work just fine on a bed, folks. It, it all works just as good as the other. It's really about reading the fish's behavior, keeping it in the right spot, keeping it in their face, maybe banging it around, hitting them in the head with it a little bit. It's really more to it. it. The bait is not important. Just get a compact creature bait on a Texas rig. Go to work in them fish. Read their behavior. Keep that bait right up in their face. That's the deal. So those are the top five baits. So let's start answering questions, I guess. Uh, Alex B, what happened to all them people? I don't really know what you're asking. Huh. Tomorrow I'm going fishing on a little pond. I'm a fishing a popping frog. Well, good luck, buddy. Frog bite is a lot of fun. What's up, Billy? What's up, Seabock? Am I bed fishing on Fork or another lake? I'm bed fishing on Fork. Uh, I've, I don't think I've been to another lake this week. I'm bed fishing on every lake I go to is the answer. Except if I went to Monticello, I wouldn't bed fish there. Um, Monticello just doesn't set up good for bed fishing right now. But, you know, every other lake that I'm going to, I'll be bed fishing right now. I guess I wouldn't if I was going to one of the power plant lakes like Walsh or something. Hey, Billy, would an umbrella rig work this week? Yeah, my buddy Ronnie Kelly's catching some on an Alabama rig. Um, yeah. There's an Alabama rig bite to be had for sure. He is catching some of those fish on that. Uh, I think, you know, some of that's main lake point driven. I think some of it, he's just fishing the Alabama rig in like windy areas of spawning areas. Like not all, like when you go into a spawning area and you see fish um, spawning in there, there's a lot more fish in that pocket that aren't spawning than are. So if it's windy and they're shallow, and you can throw that Alabama rig along those windy areas. Like there, that's a great bait when it's windy, and it's a it's probably the best moving bait of all time with all those swim baits hanging off it like that. Kevin Jones is in the house. What what? 
uh, am I running up to the north end of the east arm much? I'm the fine north end. I'm not getting all the way up because the water gets too dirty to sight fish a little bit. But, uh, well, I can't say that. There is a couple of isolated areas that I am going and looking around up there where I can see a little bit. But, yeah, I'm running anywhere that I can on the northern halves of both arms, even some of the southern half of the lake. I'm just running anywhere where I can find warmer water and clearer water, and I can see them on beds. That's where I'm going. Do I think tomorrow's going to be good with the rain? Yeah, the sight fishing deal probably won't work out so well for you guys fishing tomorrow. Now, Sunday it will, but tomorrow, I think that buzz bait would be a big player. I think the chatter bait and the swim bait would be a big player tomorrow. Are the fish spawning all over the lake or just on the north end? Well, there's ice. So... There's little areas that had gotten a little bit warmer earlier um, that are on the southern end of the lake. The whole southern end of the lake's not spawning by any means, nothing like that. Uh, mostly, most of the spawn activity is going in the northern half of the lake for sure. But there are some early spawners down there, like just the first few in some isolated pockets that have some warmer water. So if you're fishing the southern end and you find yourself in some really warm water, it's not a bad idea to go take a look at the bank and see if you can find some because there are some of those areas that are holding a few bedfish. Lots of double digits being caught right now. Yeah, it is insane the amount of double digits that are coming. Like, Lake Fork is showing you why it's the goat lake this week. Like, there is so many 10, 11, 12 pound fish. Like, normally, like, you can't really just go say, well, I expect to catch a 10-pounder this week. But I'm going to tell you, I'm real disappointed. We ain't caught a 10-pounder in my boat the last couple weeks because there has been a, just an, an unbelievable amount of double-digit class fish coming into the marinas getting weighed and stuff. It's crazy how many big ones are getting caught right now. Been finding 64 degrees in the Glade and Long Branch area. Yeah. So on water temps, um, yeah, you can find some isolated areas where you can get up around 64, 65, 66 degrees right now. Most of the lake is running in the 58 to 61, 62 range, but that's all, I mean, it's changing day to day. Um, we've been kind of stable in the very top end of the 50s, like 58, 59, and lower in the 60s, 60 to 62 in most of the lake. Um, there are some areas that are getting warmer than that, though. Am I still doing the map chip or just the fish life app? I'm just doing the fish life app. The map chip is no longer for sale. Uh, the app took the place of it. The app is the same thing, only we can put more updated, better information and keep it constantly updated at a more efficient clip for you guys. Uh, so we feel like it's a better version of the map chip because we can change it as things change on the water. So um, yeah, it took the place of it. No more map chip. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, if you've been on the fence about this app deal, you got to go get it. Because if you watch my social media stuff, you'll see I'm going to post some stuff. I think I'm going to post it tomorrow. Um, there has been some serious fish catching. I'm talking about multiple double digits from people that are using the app, um, fishing these spots on the app and using the app to help them catch these awesome fish. And there's just tons of eight pounders and seven pounders and nine pounders and like I said, even multiple double digits are getting caught using the app. Um, we do still have our big fish contest of the month going. So if you catch a big one, go ahead and DM us at the Instagram page. Um, the Fish Life Instagram page. That's Fish Life Life spelled with a Y. Uh, DM us there. Or you can text it in. Text the information in to 903-519-1542. If you're using the app and you catch a big fish, take a picture of that fish of you holding it. Also take a picture of that fish hanging from the scale where we can read the weight and send that to us at those two outlets and you'll be entered for a chance to win. The Big Fish of the Month is going to win some great prize packs. And if you win the month, you're entered for our year-end contest to win Big Fish of the Year. You're going to get some really big prizes in. Quite possibly a couple guide trips getting thrown in there. I'm just saying, among other things, we're going to take really good care of you on the year-end contest. Well, this one from Alex B. is somewhat confusing. Alex B., you need to get some spell check in your life, homie. I know how you can catch a 12-pounder out there on Lake Fork. Put a live blue hill 
I'm guessing that's supposed to be bluegill on there. Wait about 10 or 15 minutes, then you hot one. I'm guessing that means got one. Either he's drinking or he needs spell check. I don't know which one, folks. <laughs> he might not even be of age to drink. <laughs> Alex B. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you probably could catch a big one on a live bluegill right now. I bet you could. Am I saying to fish the southern area? I'm saying don't rule it out. Like, I'm not telling you to fish the southern area, but I'm fishing some of both. Like, I'm running all over the place. I'm covering a lot of water. I'm running all over the place right now. I'm fishing some on the south end. I'm fishing some on the north end. I'm fishing some on the east end, some on the west end, some on the central end. Like, I'm covering a bunch of different areas right now, for sure. And there's a lot less boats down there on the south end. I'm just saying. Colton Deluxe says he caught a 5.5 at Fork this morning on a white chatterbait, saw a few males locked on beds, but the females were still roaming in the area we were in. Well, depending on what's been going on in that area, they could have come up and dropped eggs already because we did have a full moon a couple days ago now. Um, they could just be staging waiting to come in because the males do get there first. So it could be a before or after situation. I will tell you this, on these bright, calm days when those females aren't locked on, your best bet to catch them is either the weightless Cinco wacky rigged, fish it painstakingly slow, or, or you got to throw that swim bait and just throw it and 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 throw it until you get one bite. And that's the deal. And you'll catch a big one. Is Glade turning into a boat show yet? No, it's not turning into. It's gone past a boat show. It is a boat convention. In Glade, you can definitely tell where the best area in Glade is as soon as you drive in the main boat lane and look north. Good Lord, I've never in my... Now, listen, everybody's being really polite. Nobody's being what I would consider rude. But I have never, ever in my life seen any fishing area on any lake as congested as that central north section of Glade has been this week. It's... But there's so many, like there's been 13 pounders caught and 12 pounders caught and 10, it's just so many big fish in there and it's the water's clear and you can see them and I have never seen boats stacked in as tight as they have been the last week or two in the north end of the glade in the middle. Like, it's crazy. Crazy. Somebody says, yes it is, glade is crazy. So, Chris Zaldane, not the, yeah, Chris Zaldane's been out here. Uh, I saw him this morning, actually. He launched right before I did. Alex B. said his fingers are too big. They typed the wrong letter. So it's not that he needs spell check. He needs girly fingers. He got big old fat fingers. I feel your pain, homie. Tons of boats in our area today, too. Yeah, I mean, that's March on Fork, you know. I mean, you're going to get a lot of boats in areas. That's part of the deal. Paddle tail versus shad trailer on Chatterbait. How do you decide? Um, you know, I've been throwing this one because it's not as bulky and I, I kind of went to a more translucent color because these fish are getting a lot of pressure. I'm trying to be a little more subtle with the chatterbait. I'm not saying the Live Magic Shad won't work great too. Uh, to me, the Live Magic Shad just has more bulk. Like if I was going to throw a Live Magic Shad right now, this is not a bad idea. Like I might do this. I might do this tomorrow. Um, throw the smaller Live Magic Shad, like the three and a half inch one. Um, not the four and a half inch that I normally recommend to throw if you're going to throw a live magic chat. I think that we're getting so much pressure on these fish that even though you're fishing a power fishing technique, like you need to try to be a little more finesse. Try to not let them get as good a look at it. Like that's kind of my philosophy I'm going with. And it seems to be working. We're catching good fish. So I don't know. Maybe you can put the other one on there and catch a ton of big fish. So Okay, so we have... Caught up on questions. I know I missed a ton. There was a bunch coming in way faster than I could read them earlier because I'm a fishing guy, like not an English major. Here we go. Questions coming in again. Do I have lodging on Fork that I would recommend? Of course I do. Lake Fork Marina to me has the very best lodging available. It's right there on the lake. They have a restaurant on site that's very good. They have a tackle store that's very good. They have an awesome ramp, a lot of room. A lot of the all the biggest tournaments go out of there, like Lake Fork Marina is the best lodging setup. Now, Oak Ridge Marina is not a bad option as well. And they're just a touch cheaper. The lodging is not quite as nice. The amenities aren't as nice. But if you're a couple dudes going fishing, like Oak Ridge Marina does just fine. 
and the restaurant's really good there. And the tackle store might be the very best tackle store on the lake at Oak Ridge. Like, it's a really good tackle store, and they've got a good ramp and a lot of room. So, a couple good options for you there, Lake Fork Marina and Oak Ridge Marina. When's the last update on the app for Fork? Uh, we updated it last week. Last week, we threw some new stuff on there for Lake Folk. What will the rain tomorrow do to the fish? It won't do anything to them. They're already wet, bro. <laughs> you know, it's just, you just got to deal with cloudy conditions and, 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 you know, disturbed surface. So people ask me all the time, what does rain do to the fish? And will they bite this? Will they bite that? Yes. Basically, it's like cloudy and windy. Like when it rains, it just disturbs, for the fish, it just disturbs the surface. That's all it does. It breaks up the silhouettes on the surface. So if anything, it's like cloudy, windy days, which how many people like cloudy, windy days in the spring? This guy does. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a bad thing at all. Throw that buzz bait, throw that swim bait, throw that chatter bait, get them moving baits out and go to town and you find the right areas and you might get right in a hurry on them kind of days. Fishing area with a lot of carp spawning, but still finding a few beds. Do you fish areas like this? I mean, I don't really, ow, I just stuck myself with that dang chatter bait, golly. Ouch. You know how many hook holes I have in me, people? I don't know, so I, I'm gonna go chase a squirrel a little bit here. Do you know how many hook holes are in my body? How many times? I probably get poked by a hook at least five times a day. Times 300 times. Like, I got 1,500 hook holes a year poked in me. It's out of control. It's really an issue. I don't even remember what the last question was now. Um, shoot, I'm sorry. Oh, the carp. I try to stay away from it if I can. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes they go to spawn all over the lake like the bass do. What depths am I targeting? Zero. <laughs> I'm fishing the dirt right now. This is the warmest water is in the dirt. That's what I'm fishing. Kevin, man, Kevin says he's out here from North Idaho. The reason for all the questions, Kevin, man, please don't stop asking the questions. We love the questions. I hope I've gotten to them all. I know I haven't gotten to all you guys' questions, but uh, man, ask as many as you can. But I don't mind answering. I'll answer as many as I can until we run out of time. I uh, know uh, somebody asked me something up here. Coming down first, oh, I saw this one. I want to, coming down first week of April, full spawn, or will there be some other options you have for me? That will be the the meat, the meat of the spawn. Like the spawn is just kind of getting started. There's a lot of fish starting to spawn on for it, but like the biggest number of fish that'll be on beds will probably be going on that first week of April. So, yeah. The highest percentage of fish of the whole year will be spawning that first week of April. Now, that being said, you'll be able to <clears throat> go out there and throw a swim jig and a frog and a swim bait and all that kind of stuff. You should catch them, too. Um, weightless plastics are always good when fish are spawning. So, that's the deal. The best time to catch them, bass, is when it's bright about 100 degrees. You'll catch about 20 bass. That's some pretty detailed suggestions there, Alex B. Like, I... Does anybody know Alex B? Does he have like ESPN or whatever they call that stuff where you can see into the future? Like, I don't know about predicting exact numbers of how many you're going to catch. That doesn't really seem possible. So, like, if this dude's right, then we need to go like lottery ticket shopping, Alex. I'm just saying, bro. Looking for lodging options that aren't crazy, if that's possible. Um, I don't think Lake Fork Marina or Oakers Marina is crazy. I don't know if that's what you were getting at, but I don't know what you mean by not by like crazy expensive. Man, that, Oak Ridge Marina is not crazy expensive. All neither is Lake Fort Marina. Stephen Latham caught thirty nine fish yesterday. Stephen, was that on your Cheetah Lake? Because if that's on your Cheetah Lake, that doesn't count. Like if if that's on your Cheetah Lake, thirty nine is like nine. I'm just saying because I know about your Cheetah Lake and it's really good. Oh, he says negative. Okay, Stephen caught 39 yesterday. Well, Stephen, good job, buddy. Get after it. Best Western in Emory is $100 a night? Good grief. Well, neither Lake Fork Marina or Oakers Marina is $100 a night. I know that. And they got better rooms than that place does. It's just the dang Best Western, and you're not even on the water. And you don't have a tackle sort. And you don't have a rest. Like, man, Best Western needs to get real. That's crazy. 
Had baths on beds yesterday, today empty. What's the deal? Did the water, okay, so this is a question. Somebody said they saw baths on beds yesterday, today the beds were empty, what's the deal? My number one question for you is did the water temperature drop any significant amount? Because that water temperature drop, especially if you went back in there this morning, those fish will start getting on the bed in the afternoon. That water temperature drops overnight with these cold nights we're having, those fish will suck back off those beds. And then if it warms back up that afternoon, they'll jump right back on them in the afternoon, so. Am I still finding them in ditches or sticking to the flats? I mean, yeah, there's fish in the ditches. I'm just a sight fishing crazy person. Like, sight fishing is my deal of all deals. It's what I want to do more than anything else. So, uh, there's fish in the ditches that can be caught out there. There's no doubt about it. In fact, we do catch fish in the ditches. When I got So, when I've got two customers, I'll have one up there on a bed fish working with me. And I got the other guy throwing a Cinco out behind us in the ditch in the drain that leads into the flat or just kind of fan casting around the deeper part of the flat. And we catch big fish on the Cinco all the time doing that. So, yes, they're there. But we're, yeah, we're definitely concentrating on the spawning fish up on the flats. If I want to fish the south end, what's the best ramp? Uh, Oak Ridge is a really good ramp right there. Points right towards the south end. Points you in the direction that you want to go. Huge Smash Tech fan. Have you had issues with the pearl white convicts, red eyes, bleeding into the bait? Mine have red heads now. Maybe just North Texas heat. You demand. Uh, yeah, that's a heat thing. That is a heat thing. Um, I have had them do that, but it was when I left them like out in the garage in the middle of summertime all day long just sitting in the garage and they got real hot. Um, it's a heat thing. They will do that if you get them too hot. Yep. What's my favorite bed fishing bait? Uh, just any compact creature bait. I mean, the one I'm using is an oversized version of a Rage Menace. It's a home port. It's not for sale. It violates the Rage patent, so the guy can't sell it. Uh, but it's a really good bait. I like it a lot. But you could use a Rage Crawl. You could use a Smash Tech Smash Crawl. You could use uh, you could use a Baby Brush Hog. You could use a Beaver D-Bomb. I mean, just any kind of compact uh, creature bait is fine. It really doesn't matter what bait it is. It really doesn't. See if we can't get a few more questions answered. Well, okay. If you got any more questions that you want to drop in or some of you want to re-drop a question in, I'm sorry for not keeping up with all of them. There's a bunch of you guys asking a bunch of questions tonight. And I love each and every one of you for doing that. Thank you so much. Captain Ron is crazy. Captain Ron is crazy. I got him good though, folks. Hopefully you follow the Facebook page because I got Cat. I, boy, I got Captain Ron's boat real good. I'm talking about tied his rods together with fishing string, zip tied his daggum rod straps together, but he couldn't get the straps off the rods. I uh, tied his latches together on his compartments where he couldn't open his compartments. Like, hmm. Somebody says, Billy, do you know Matt Barnett? I went fishing with him. He caught, what did I say? God dang, there's a lot of questions dropping in. He caught pretty good bass today. Alex B., if you know Matt Barnett, then you are absolutely my people. Matt Barnett is my buddy, man. I've been on Toledo Men buddy trips with him. That is a good, stinking dude right there. I love old, old Barnett. Old Nick from down there in South Louisiana. What is the best part of the spawn to get them on top water? I mean, oh, it's time now. Like, start throwing it now. Like, man, you can start throwing that yellow magic around. You can start throwing buzz bait. Like I said, I mean, top water is kind of it's time to start throwing in top water right now. Pretty much, guys. Pretty much it is. So, somebody says, thanks for sharing the info and your time, man. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Um, Holly, man, it's just so awesome getting to do what I do every day, man. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, hmm, I want to thank everybody I need to thank on this deal. Mostly, I need to thank y'all. Y'all are the thing that makes it tick. SixCentsFishing.com. You need a new rod? You need some apparel? You need the best hard baits in the game? Go over to SixCentsFishing.com. Get some jigs, guys. Get some freaking jigs. Like swim jigs, little 3 8 ounce flipping jigs. I mean, that's a great bed fishing. That's one of my... 
Like, my favorite thing to catch them on on a bed is a 3 8 ounce jig. <laughs> like, with a real short skirt trim and a real short crawl. Like, that's my favorite thing to catch them on a bed with. But go over to successfishing.com when you do, when you make an order. Be sure you punch in the code, you're like Fort Guy, get a 10% discount on all orders. Smash Tech Baits, swim baits are kicking in right now. Go over to Smash Tech Baits. That guy makes the best variety of quality swim baits. He's such a good dude. Please check him out, smashtechbaits.com. Man, and we're going to go ahead and get going. It's been a long week. I'm tired. i got a lot of editing to do tonight and tomorrow. So, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go make some cinematic magic, as they say, for you guys to enjoy next week. So, y'all stay tuned to the Year Lake Fort Guy YouTube channel. We appreciate all of you so much, and we'll see you next time right here on 